thank yous and other stuff for the end, so let's just get into this delightful reading. Um, our final performer of the evening is a stand-up comedian from Vancouver who now lives in Amsterdam. What? He's doing his one-man show, Halloween, Yugoslavia, and the Dutch. That's the title. Uh, at Havana Theater, January 19th and 20th, and as a teenager, he was a high-achieving, French immersion-loving, gay drama student from Burnaby who was never bullied because kids like subconsciously knew that he had a deep rage seething beneath the surface that could explode at any moment. He's gonna explode right through the audience. Give it up for Daniel Ryan Spall. Give it up for Sarah, everybody. Oh my gosh. This is my first time doing Teen Hang Angst, and I'm so excited. It's so lovely. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. This is so much fun. So I'm actually here for a couple months this winter, and so I wanted to do this show, and uh, I was digging through all my, my high school uh, writings and stuff, and it was a goddamn gold mine. Like, it, this show could be Dan and Ryan Spaulding, Teen Angst, a one-man show. Um, <laughs> So, uh, when I was 15, I decided to write a novel. <laughs> it was about um, street youth in Vancouver. Because <laughs> who better to write about, like, drugged up, fucked up street youth than a 15-year-old gay kid in Burnaby who lived near Deer Lake. <laughs> And so the title of the novel was Jagged Harmony. And so it, it sort of went between prose and poems, because there was just there was a shitload of poems in it too, because novels can have poems. So one of the characters who committed suicide, Brian, he wrote a lot of poems. So this is the first poem. Are you guys ready? So this poem is called, Nature of My Life, Broken Through Words. <laughs> I walked beneath the light, as did my sister. We both walk blinded by our fears. Now I see the rain we tried to ignore. As it destroyed me, it killed her. <laughs> but there is hope for my sister, who always has been used to the darkness. Broken bones heal, and like rain, they redeem the soul. <laughs> Together, they forgive the deceit. I see twirls in the marble. Its sounds penetrates the calling of salvation. Voices burn through the tears that cry, I am not here. <laughs> Misplaced. <laughs> Carry me beyond these paths, the water. Save me so I may be free. Now this chapter of the novel is called Audrey's List. Okay. A section of Catherine's floor was covered in a heap of blankets, sheets, and a large pillow embroidered with the happy image of Winnie the Pooh eating a jar of honey. <laughs> Audrey stayed at Catherine's for the past two days. To her surprise, her parents hadn't called yet. She knew they didn't hate her. Distance was a punishment. They weren't punishing her, they were punishing themselves. <laughs> Catherine didn't know about Audrey's HIV. <laughs> Somehow things would have been different if she knew. All Audrey wanted was the fragments of a normal life before the constant need to breathe became too much to bear. <laughs> On Catherine's de desk, a yellow pad of paper was tossed. A long, dulling pencil was beside it, its tip barely touching the edge of the pad. Names were written in long hand. Scott Baines, Adam N. Bourne, Alex Campron, 
Eric Firth. John Vervain. David Evans. Craig. There was someone missing from the list. It, he wasn't like the others. She couldn't ask the clinic to contact someone she didn't remember. He was the last, which meant only one thing. Audrey had to do this face to face. <laughs> Poor Audrey. Poor Audrey. Alright, last poem. This poem is called... <laughs> well, not of the book, but... <laughs> Sorry, you guys got really hooked into Audrey's list, didn't you? Maybe I need to finish this book? 